So La Mopin was a bisexual, opera singing, swashbuckling, badass bitch. And that's the end of today's story, thank you. Hello and welcome to the 12 Gays of Christmas, a series where I tell you about 12 notable gays every day on the lead up to Christmas. Today we will be covering a very fun one, a very wild story, Julie Dobney or Le Mopin. Le Mopin? La Mopin. La Mopin. Mopin. <laughs> La Mopin. <laughs> Sorry to French speakers everywhere, but I'll be telling you the story today. This story was told to me by my dear friend, Laura Moore. She is hilarious. She's so intelligent. I'm just giving her a big fat shout out here because she wrote an article in her blog called Story of a City is the name of the blog. Um, and she wrote an article about Julie Dobney, about La Maupin. Um, and if she could hear me butchering the pronunciation, I'm sure she'd whoop my ass right now. But uh, she's not here, so thank you to Laura, who has made me aware of this brilliant, amazing, chaotic, unbelievable story um, that I'm excited to share with you today. So, La Maupin, who is she, who was she? Born in 1673, La Maupin was the daughter of the secretary to the master of the horses of Louis the 14th. So at nine years old, her and her father moved to the Chateau de Versailles and she grew up in Louis XIV's court of nobles. One of her father's duties as the secretary to the keeper of the horses, the keeper of the horses name, by the way, was Comte d'Armagnac. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna accompany all of my pronunciations with the, the term on screen because um, I'm trying, but <laughs> One of his duties, as well as looking after the horses and helping him, was to train the king's squires. And he decided to train his daughter Julie among them. So not only did she become proficient in reading, writing, drawing, she also was taught to be a master swordsman. She would typically dress up as a boy, which to be honest, wasn't really frowned upon too much there because Louis XIV's brother famously cross-dressed as well. So. I mean, nobody really batted an eyelid at it in the French court, which kind of a vibe. Interestingly, this father also brought her to many a brothel and gambling pub by night, which, okay. And he also said that if she had sex with any man, he would kill that man. Now, Julie, showing brightness from a young age, found a loophole in the system because she went ahead and banged Comte Dominique which you will recall is her father's boss. So he couldn't really do much about that. Now, Comte Dominic very much enjoyed the company of Julie, who was 14, he was 32. Just let that sit for a minute. So he had her married to, I'm so sorry, Sir de Maupin de Saint-Germain. Hence where she got her name Le Maupin from, was then stationed overseas so that Comte Dominic could stay with Julie out of the eye of her official husband. Anyway, when she turned 16, um, Comte Dominic got sick of her. La Maupin then hooked up with like this fit swordsman and was like, you know what, ciao dios, like sick of this shit. And she fled Paris, she fled Versailles. She and this swordsman boy would like hop town to town with no money and they would earn their keep by singing and by fencing, because obviously they could both sword fight. But their love affair quickly fizzled out. So she started having this fling with the local merchant's daughter. Now, this girl's parents being distraught at the fact that their daughter was seeing a woman, God forbid, shipped their daughter off to a convent because she needs Jesus. Le Maupin did not let this stop her, no. No, she joined said nunnery as well, so that she could be with the daughter. She also needs Jesus. So yes, they could keep banging under the eyes of the Lord. If that wasn't already a little bit, huh? Le Maupin then exhumes the body of a recently deceased nun, puts that body in the bed of her lover, and then burns the nunnery to the ground. I take it back, Jesus can't help you anymore. <laughs> they make their escape in the chaos of the burning down nunnery. And she does this all for love. 
which is actually really romantic and quite beautiful if it wasn't for the fact that their love affair then fizzled out and she became quite bored of the merchant's daughter and then threw her aside as well. But now, Le Maupin had charges of arson, kidnapping and body snatching to contend with. So she's on the run. I shouldn't say the run, it's kind of a bit more. She is sentenced to death. She's sentenced to death. And she runs back to Paris and goes to her lover, Comte d'Armanac, um, and pleads with him. And he then pleads to King Louis XIV that she be pardoned. Louis XIV pardons her. Do you know what, girl? Fair. You know what? We'd all do the same. Don't you even worry, you cute girl. We all deserve a second chance. Mm -mm. Get it. So what does she do? She runs off again. Because why the fuck not? So yeah, she goes to Paris, starts seeing this boy who is auditioning for the Paris Opera and she convinces him to get her an audition, which she gets and then slays and, and she becomes an opera singer. Because why the fuck not? You gotta understand that opera singing is like, mm, it's the Taylor Swift of the time. It's the like, the shit and nothing but the shit. And she tours from city to city singing. But also on her tours, she is known to dress up as a man, cross-dress, start brawl fights, gamble of an evening. She is then invited back to the Chateau de Versailles by King Louis XIV's brother, Philippe Dolan. She plays for him in his court and she's dressed up as a man. So he's probably loving it. We've got two cross-dressing queens up here, having a great time. Le Maupin, from the stage, pulls up, a famously single court noblewoman and snogs her. So not only is she publicly kissing a woman, which is crazy of these times, this noblewoman has three suitors there as well. And those three suitors then challenge Julie to a duel, which she wins, all three. Is there anything that this woman can't do? I don't think, well, be tame, be calm, live a normal life, calm the fuck down. But dueling is illegal, so she gets sentenced to death again. I mean, I think like to be sentenced to death twice in one life is an achievement in and of itself. But actually, what's even more of an achievement is that she then pleads to Philip, who then pleads to his brother, who pardons her again. She went back to singing, she went back to touring, she went back to taking many lover, breaking many a heart, but eventually she is stopped in her path and falls deeply in love with La Marquise de Florenzac, who she falls deeply and madly and profoundly in love with. But La Marquise de Florenzac died a few years later of the fever and Julie was inconsolable and fell into a deep depression and um, she ended up volunteering herself into a nunnery for real this time. Um, where she lived for the rest of her days, which only lasted until 33, where she too passed. She may have passed young, but she lived a full and dramatic and unbelievable life that I'm literally finding it hard to believe. Like, wow. Definitely, definitely a cool woman. Thank you so much for watching Gay4. Um, <laughs> if you liked this video, Please, um, please like, comment, subscribe, uh, share it with your friends, do all the usual, and please tune in again tomorrow for Gay Five. Um, and if you've missed any of my other videos, go catch them as well. I have the playlist up here somewhere in the box. Um, yeah, all right.